we are now starting on module three, second grade module three, and we are going to be doing lesson one. All right, so make sure you've got those materials out of your um, binder so that you can work with us on this. We're starting on a brand new module today. All right, we are going to start. I need for you to shut your video off if you need to, and you need to go and locate your uh, meter stick that you made. Remember when you made that meter stick a few days ago? You need to have that meter stick, and if you don't have it, you're going to need to go and find it. And there is a second one that was included in the things that we gave you, and you might need to stop and make yours because you will need to have that for today. All right, so pause the video if you need to go and get the materials that you need to in order to be able to do what we're doing today. Okay, so I'm going to put this up just a little bit, and we are going to be doing some skip counting using multiples. Oh dear, that's kind of not showing up very good. There we go. We're going to do some skip counting, and we're going to use our meter stick to help us count uh, by tens. So you are going to start with your finger on zero. There's my zero, and I'm going to put my finger on it. And I would like you to slide your finger along your meter stick until you get to 50 centimeters. Are we ready? Here we go. So there's 10, 20, oops, 30, that didn't slide very good, 40, there I am at 50. Oops, I've got to fix this on my desk so it works better. So there I am at 50 centimeters. Now, as soon as you get to 50, I want you to immediately slide back 10. So you're going from 50 back to 40. All right, did you see that? So I'm going to give you a number. We're gonna try that one more time. And I can see that I better put a little more tape. I can see that this needs just a little bit more tape so my finger doesn't get hung up. All right, let's try that again. So we're going to start with our finger on zero, and from here I'm going to slide up 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 50, and then I'm going to slide back to 40. So basically we counted up to 50 by 10s, and then we counted back by 10 and, and landed on 40. We're going to do a couple of more exercises like that. We're going to start again. We're going to start with our finger on zero. Okay, my fingers are on zero, and I'm going to count up to 80. Are you ready? There's 10, sliding over, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then I want to go back how much? I'm going to go back 10. If I go back 10, does that put me on 70? Yes, if I skip counted all the way up to 80 and then counted back 10, would put me at 70. Okay, this time I'm going to try to trick you. Are you ready? This time we're going to count up to, um, we are going to start at, um, we're going to start at, hang on. Okay, this time we are going to skip count by 10s. And we're going to slide our finger all the way up. Well, actually, we're not even going to skip count. We're just going to slide all the way up to 85. So this time, we're just sliding along. There's 10, 20. I'm looking for 85, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And did I say 85? I did say 85. Is it, oh, 85 is right there. I'm going to pull that down a little bit closer so you can see that 85. Okay, so I got all the way up to 85 by sliding my finger up on my, my uh, meter stick up to 85 because it's like a big, huge number line. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that meter stick is used for measuring things, but it's also like a number line. Now, if I wanted to go back 10 from 85, could I do that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Look where that puts me. From 85 down to... 75. So skipping back from 85 and doing 10 back would give me 75. 85 take away 10 would give me 75. Okay, we're going to go back up to zero, and this time I want you to slide up to 41. Are you ready? Here we go. 
and sliding, there's 10 and 20 and 30. There's 40, and right there is 41. Now I want to go back 10. Where would that put me? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where did that put me? Did that put you at 31? If I go back from 41, I end up on 31 if I'm counting back 10. All right, let's get, try this one more time. We're going to start at 0. And this time, we're going to go all the way up to 93. Here we go. I'm sliding along. Where's 93? There's 80, 90, 1, 2, 3. I want to go back 10 from 93. Well, I think I see a pattern here. From 93 going back to 80, or going back 10, wouldn't that put me at 83? I think it would. Are there 10 centimeters between? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. From 93 to 83 is back 10. Okay, let's try one more of those. We are going to start at 0, and we're going to slide our way all the way to 67. There's 67 right there. I want to go back 10 from 67. Think about where would that put you if I went back from 67. Are you seeing a pattern from 67? Did you say you would end up at 57? If you did, congratulations. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit more tricky this time. This time I want you to start at 0 and slide to 45. There's 45 right there. What if I said, let's go back 20? Could you count back 20? That would be two groups of 10, right? So let's go back 10, which puts me at 35. I still have to go back 10 more. Where would that put me? Woo, 10 more at 25. So if you said that you would be at 25, counting back 20 from 45, if you landed on 25, congratulations, you did a fantastic job. This time we're going to slide all the way up to 72. Are you all the way up to 72? We're going to go back 20, which is two groups of 10. So I'm going to do my first group of 10 from 72 back to 62, and from 62 to 52. That was counting back 20. So yeah, it's not very hard, especially when you're using a number line. Okay, starting at 0, this time I want you to slide all the way up to 84 all the way up to 84. Where's 84? There it is right there. I want you to count back 20. Well, that's two groups of 10, so from 84 to, oh, did you say 74? That's my first group of 10, there's 74. Let's go back another group of 10, which puts me at 64. All right, so we used our, uh, our meter stick as a number line. Can you see how easy that is to use that as a number line? So easy to do. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that little exercise, and please feel free at any time to practice more of that on your own. Now I'm going to show you another kind of number line today, and um, this one is going to seem a little bit different to you. I'm going to pull this up so you can see the whole number line. So I have a number line today that starts actually at zero, even though there isn't a zero on here, it does start at zero, and it counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this number line only has twelve numbers on it. Hmm, I wonder what that could possibly, whoops, that went up just a bit too much, Miss Star, there we go. That number, this number line actually, if you, you probably can't see these little tiny numbers down here, but it starts at zero and goes all the way up to, whoops, they didn't write that last one in, all the way up to 60. So I have little tiny tick marks down here at the bottom that count, I'm going to see if I can't make that a little bit bigger, I know that's really hard to see, you don't have one of these, but it starts at zero and counts all the way up to 60. All right, just keep that in mind because that will come into play in a few minutes. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this number line that has from 0 to 12 on it. Oops, up just a little higher, mister. Uh, from 0 to 12 on it. And let's, we, we are going to count by fives this time. Okay, so we're going to start at 0. Oops, out of focus. And we're going to count by fives. Rainbow counting, if you would. So we're starting at 0. 5, 10, 15, 
20, 25, 30, 35, oops, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So if I use this number line and I count by fives, I go from 0 to 60. Let's do that again. Starting at 0, counting by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Remember how I told you that this very last number on the bottom part of my number line is a 60? Well, it is. So technically, I just counted to 60 by fives. Now, here's an interesting thing about this number line. If I take this number line that counts by fives and I put it in a circle like this, I'm going to put it together in a circle just like this this. In fact, I'm even going to tape it together. Hang on, let me grab my tape. I'm going to make this into a circle. So it's still a line, but that it's a line that's now been made into a circle. Oops, I'm going to tape it on this side. Okay, whoops, I almost taped myself to it. Here we go. I'm going to tape that into a circle, and I'm going to finish by sh making this two show up again. There we go, and I'm going to tape this side too now. Oops, it's rolling around because it's a circle. Okay, here I go. So now I have it in a circle. And I'm starting at, look, I'm starting at 12, and I'm going to 1. Or I could be starting at 0. Remember how we said this was also 0? Let's do that skip counting again using this as a circle instead of a flat line. Are you ready? So here we go. So from 12 to 1 would count for 5. Ready? And... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and back to the 12 would get us at, remember what we said? That was 60. So does that seem familiar to any of you when I put that number line in a circle like that? Hmm. Let's see if you've ever seen anything that looks like this. Does that look familiar to you? I'll bet you you've seen one of these before. Yeah, that is what our clocks look like. That clock is basically a number line that's been put into a circle. Here's my number line that I've put into a circle. Here's that same number line put into a flat circle on a piece of paper or maybe like your clock on the wall and it works exactly the same way. Notice that when I'm at the 12, I have zero as my starting point, so I'm gonna start at zero and we're gonna count. Five, 10, 15, 20, I'm still on the number line, <clears throat> 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and look where I end up when I get back up there at the top. I end up at 60. So this is how a clock is set up, my friends. It skip counts by fives, and between zero and five, there are one, two, three, four, five minutes. So from zero to five is five minutes. From five to 10 is 10 minutes. From 10 to 15 is 15 minutes. 15 to 20 is 20 minutes. 20 to 25 is 25 minutes. From 25 to 30 is 30 minutes. From 35, from 30 to 35 is 35 minutes. To 40 minutes, to 45 minutes, to 50 minutes, to 55 minutes, all the way up to 60. Depending on whether I'm starting or ending, I'm always going to start at zero and end at 60. Now that's how your clock is set up. You can probably see a relationship between our meter stick, which is used for measuring. This one we used for measuring in our last module for measuring the distance of things or the length of things. What do we use to measure with this number line that's been put into a circle? If you said that we use it to measure time, you are absolutely correct. We use that number line to measure, oops, I should have used a capital T, to measure time. Absolutely. I wish I'd not made that a small letter T, but I did. 
Oh dear, hang on just a second. I'm going to fix that. Woohoo, Miss Star, you fixed it. So I have a capital letter T. So this particular number line, that circular number line, oops, that I showed you just a minute ago, is a number line that used to be flat and we turned it into a circle and we use that for measuring time the same way we use our meter stick for measuring distance or length. All right, so two different number lines used for measuring. Let's take that one step further. Let's start at 60 and let's count back to 45. Are you ready? So from 60, counting back 5 is 55. 5 more is 50. 5 more is 45. So we can not only count backwards, but we can also count forward. Let's start at 30 and let's count back to 15. Are you ready? From 30, counting back 5 to 25. Counting back 5 to 20. Counting back 5 more to 15. So we can either count forward or back. Let's start at 10 and count forward to 40, shall we? Here we go. So there's 10, uh, I mean uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So we counted from 10 to 40. Let's count from 40 back to 5. Are you ready? Here we go. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and 5. So you can practice counting forward and back if you have a clock at your house. I know you don't have a copy of this because they didn't include one in the lesson, but I thought it would be helpful for you to be able to visually see what I was talking about. So if you can maybe print one off at home for yourself to be able to practice this, or if you have access to one, that would be fantastic. All right, I'm going to set those aside for just a minute. I'm going to get my whiteboard out. You won't need to have yours, but I will need to have mine for this next part of this activity. We are going to be doing some counting up and counting down. And this time we are going to be counting by ones. Okay, we're going to start kind of high this time. We're going to start at 95. So we're going to start at 95 and we are going to count by ones from 95. And I think we'll stop at, oh, let's stop at 120, shall we? So we're going to go from 95 to 120. Ready? And 95. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120. How did you do? Were you able to count all the way up to 120 without having to think very hard about it? I hope that you could, because we're going to do a couple more of those. Okay, let's try another one. It's been a while since we've done this. Let's go ahead and let's start at 101. Let's count to 101 all the way up to 105. Are you ready? Oop, not 150. That would take us a really long time. Let's just count to 105, shall we? Here we go, starting with 101. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. So now that we're on 105, could you count back? And this time I want you to end on 98. Are you ready? So we're going to count back. 105, 104, 103, 102, 101, 100. Do you know where to go? 99, 98. So we're going to start at 98 and we're going to count up again. And this time we're going to stop at 111. Are you ready? 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111. We're going to start at 111 and we're going to count back this time. We're going to count back to, do you think you could make it all the way to, oops, sorry, that's not what I wanted. Could you make it all the way back to 88? Wow, that's going to be a lot of counting, but I think we can do it. Starting at 111. Ready? And 
111, 110, 109, 108, 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, 102, 101, 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90, ooh, we're from 90, 89, and 88. Now that's a really excellent practice for you guys to practice on your own at home. Start at one number and count forward to a certain number, and then turn around and count back some numbers. I wonder how well you could do that even without Mistar. Alrighty, so now let's see. We're going to try that again, except this time we're not going to count by ones, but we're going to count by tens. I'm going to have you start at 60. Could you count from 60 all the way up to 110? Could you start at 60 and count up to 110? Are you ready? 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Now that we're at 110, I'm going to want you to count back, but I want you to count back to, mm, let's count back to 70. Are you ready? So 110. 100, 90, 80, 70. Okay, so we made it back to 70. This time we're going to count up. And we're going to go all the way up to 140, from 70 to 140. Are you ready? So here we go. 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. Very good. Guess what we're going to do that? We're going to go back again. Let's see, could we make it all the way back to 50? I'll bet we could. Let's give it a try. 140, 130, 120, 110, 100, 190, 180, 170, 160, ending on 150. How'd you do? Did you do were you success, as successful at skip counting forward and back by tens? I hope so, because that's an important skill for you to be able to do. Okay, so uh, I want to ask you a question. If we do a lot of counting, sometimes we count by ones, sometimes we count by twos, sometimes we count by fives, sometimes we count by tens, sometimes we count by hundreds, and sometimes we count by a thousand. Well, we haven't ever done that yet, but we probably will in the future here before too long. So I want to ask you, when you're counting and you want to get someplace quickly, would you want to count by ones like one, two, three, four? That takes a really long time. Well, you could count by twos. Whoops, I should always start at zero. Zero, two, four, six, eight, eh, that's still, that's faster, but not as fast. Well, maybe I'll count by fives. So let's count by fives. Zero, five, 10, 15, 20. Well, that's faster, but still, I think maybe I could probably find a faster way to count than by ones or by twos or by fives. What if I counted by tens? Oops, start at zero, mister. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, wow, that's pretty fast, and then 60. Hmm, I wonder if I counted by 100s, would that be even faster? 0, 100, 200, 300, 400. Wow, that is really fast when I count by 100s. I don't know, if I wanted to get someplace in a hurry and I was trying to get to a really big number, I would probably choose counting by tens or by hundreds to get me there quickly, especially if I was trying to get to a thousand. So I want you to keep that in mind and thinking about all of these different counting patterns that we do. Counting by ones, yeah, that's pretty slow. Counting by twos is faster, but still not quite as fast, but it's still faster than ones. Counting by fives gets you places quickly, but counting by tens gets you there even faster. And if I really wanted to get to 1,000, counting by 100s would get me there the fastest way of all. So I want you to keep that in mind as we start talking about 
um, different ways of counting. So I'm going to erase my board and I'm going to show you a unit. Okay, you're going to kind of think this is an interesting little unit. You've probably seen one of these when you've been down at the lunchroom. When you go to drink your milk, you usually use a straw. So we're going to count that as one unit. Okay, now counting everything by one unit, if I wanted to get to a thousand, would really take me a long time because I would be like one, two, three, four. Oh, straws would be going all over the place and it would be a giant size mess. So counting by ones could be effective, but it would definitely take me a long time. So I think I'm going to skip counting by fives because I know that it's a lot easier if I could take 10 straws and put them in a bundle. So here's a bundle. I know that's, uh, trust me, this is 10 straws, okay? You can count them if you want, but I've already counted them out and I have put a rubber band around them to make them be a bundle, and I'm gonna use that word, a bundle of 10. So if I had like a bunch of these, it would be a lot easier to count by tens than it would be to count by ones. So I have a single, I have a bundle of 10. What if I had two bundles of 10? I'm gonna take my single out for just a minute. What if I had two bundles of 10, would that be easy? Well, yeah, it would be because skip counting by tens is pretty easy, right? So I have 10 and 20. What if I added another bundle of 10? Pretty easy. I'm going to push this up just a little bit more so you can see that better. So there's my bundles. I have a bundle of 10, 20, and 30. So I'm calling these what? I'm calling them bundles. Let's put another bundle in. Here's a bundle of 10 more. How much is that? Well, easy, 10, 20, 30, 40. Let's do another bundle. Is that easy? 10, 20, 30, 40. It would be a lot easier, oops, 10, 20, 30, 40. Oops, 50, I miss counting one. Would you rather count with one single straw at a time or would you rather have them put in bundles of 10 if I wanted to get to 1,000 quickly? What do you think? Hmm, alrighty, alrighty. So hang on just a second. Here we go. So let's continue putting some more bundles together. Let's do another bundle of 10. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six bundles of 10. What would that be? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Well, that's certainly in a fast way to count to 60 without counting uh, one straw at a time. I don't really want to do that. So let's put in another two bundles. Can we put in two more bundles? Let's do that. Wow, I'm getting a lot of bundles here. Let's count them. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Do you want to count 80 straws or would you rather count by tens? Hello, doesn't take very, you don't have to be very smart to think, well, Miss Star, I'd rather count by tens. Let's put in another bundle. What does that make? It's got 10 in it. Trust me, I counted them all out. It's got 10 in it. So how many do I have now if I have nine bundles? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Oops, I've got 90. If I wanted to have 100, how many bundles would I need? I'm bringing over another bundle. Okay, so now how many bundles do I have here all together? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 bundles of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So 10 groups of 10, so here's a group of 10, a group of 10, a group of 10, a group of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So I've got 10 groups or 10 bundles of 10. 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100. Boy, that's something that's easy to remember. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100. Say that with me. 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100. 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100. So I'm looking at this big bundle here. I have 
a bundle don't this is crazy look at this really big bundle i have got a big bundle i took all of these 10 groups of 10 which is the same as what did i just tell you it's the same as 100 here is 100 straws my friend 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100 there's a pretty big bundle so if I took all of these and I bundled them together in one big bundle, here it is. I've got one big bundle now. That gives me 100. So 10 groups of 10 is the same as 100. And it's a lot faster to count it that way than it is to count just individual single straws. Of course, you can, you can count by ones, but it just takes a long time. You could even count by tens. It's faster. But if I wanted to get someplace really fast, like a thousand, I think I would rather count by big bundles, which would be a hundred. Ten groups of ten is the same as, what is it? Look at that. It's the same as one hundred. All right. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I only have one bundle of one hundred. I didn't have time to make ten bundles of, of one hundred. But, you know, I could do that by drawing a little representation of these bundles. I could use a single straw. See that little single straw right there? I could use that single straw to represent one. I could use a small bundle. I'm going to move these. I could use a small bundle to represent 10. And then I could use a large bundle to represent 100. So one single straw by itself would be the same as counting one. A bunch of straws together in a small bundle would be like 10. And then if I had a larger bundle, which was 10 groups of 10, that would be the same as 100. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna put that to practice here in just a minute. I'm going to show you on my whiteboard what I am talking about. I'm going to bring this down just a tiny bit. So if I had, if I was going to count, say, like, um, I'm going to make myself some big bundles. Okay, this big box are my big bundles. Okay, so you know that, that big bundle I just showed you a minute ago? I'm going to draw a representation of that big bundle by using a box, and I'm just going to put a 100 in it, just so I remember that that bundle represents the same thing as my woo, 100 straws. So there's one bundle and two bundles. Now what if I wanted to show bundles that were not quite as big? Could I just draw a smaller bundle? I could. I'm going to draw three of those. Okay, I'm drawing something to represent this bundle of straws. Do you remember how many straws there were in this bundle? Oh boy, that's hard to count. There were 10 straws in each bundle. So I can take those bundles that I showed you just a minute ago and turn them into a diagram or a picture representation. Now, do you remember how we show just a single straw? Where'd my single straw go? That one's a hard, hard to keep track of because it's not tied to anything. Remember when we're going to show just one, we're going to just show a single. I'm going to draw two of those. So I actually have created a number here, my friends, using hundreds, tens, and ones. How many hundreds do I have? I have two hundreds. How many tens do I have? Well, I have three tens. And how many ones do I have? I have two ones. Notice that I'm using an H to represent hundreds. I'm using a T to represent tens, and I'm using an O to represent ones. So if I was going to add those tens, or those hundreds, those tens, and those ones, I would end up with 232. This bundle of straws represents two hundreds, three tens, and two ones. All right, shall we try a couple more of those? We're going to try a couple more, and then we're going to move on to our problem set. Okie dokie. So in just a minute, you're going to be drawing some yourself. All right, so right now, let's try. Let's do, let's do one 100. Okay, here's my big bundle. I'm going to put 100 in it. 
And I'm going to do one, two, three. Uh oh, I'm going to run out of space. Four and five. That's okay. Oops, not quite as big. Six. Oop, Miss Star, you should make that one bigger. Six. How many did I draw? One, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of those is a ten, a ten, a ten. And by the way, I would like you to put what that represents inside the bundle. So there's a bundle of 100. There's six bundles of tens. And let's do one, two, three, four, five ones. Now that is a number. That's three hundreds, six, one, two, three, four, five, six tens, and one, two, three, four, five ones. And my friends, that does represent a number. That represents three one hundreds, six tens. Ooh, that's really close to that one, isn't it? Six tens and five ones, or three hundred sixty-five. All right, I think we're getting ready to move on to the next part of our lesson. Here we go. So let's pull out our little packet. Let me put this down so it's not in my way. And here I go. So, oh, don't lose. Oh, there it is. I lost one of those ones and I just found it just now. So here we go. If you look at the very top of your page, you're going to see bundles of 100, bundles of 10 and bundles of 1. See how they've drawn those bundles? And I'm going to have you do that too. So you are going to draw models of 1, 10s, and 100s. And your teacher, that's me, will tell you which number to model. So I'm going to ask you to start off. We're going to actually draw the model first. On the first box, box number 1, I would like you to start with 4 100, so that's going to be four boxes that are big. These are big bundles, four big bundles. And you're going to identify tho those as bundles of 100 by putting 100 in each one of those bundles. So there's a bundle of 100, a bundle of 100, 100, and 100. And if at any time you need to pause the video because I'm going too fast, that's okay. That's kind of the nice thing about being a distance learner or learning when your teacher isn't there um, to be able to pause the video until you get up with where you need to be. So I did four bundles of 100. I'm going to do three bundles of 10. Now these bundles have to be smaller because remember they don't hold as many straws as the bundles of 100. They only hold, hold 10 straws. All right. So we have four one hundreds, three tens, and let's do one, two, three, four, five. So I have five ones. Now let's identify those as four hundreds, the little h for hundreds. How many tens did we have? Three tens, and how many ones did we have? We had five ones. What number does that represent? Well, four one hundreds, three tens, and five ones, which is, say it with me, 435. Please do not say 435. That would not be the proper way to pronounce that number. The word and will come in later when you're in the fourth or fifth grade and you're starting to work with decimals. We're working only with whole numbers right now, so please don't say 435. It's not. 435, and you're going to hear Miss Starr do it that way. That's the way I need you to do it as well. All right, let's try another one. This time, I would like you to do two bundles of 100. There's my first one. There's my second one. Remember to identify it as a bundle of 100. If I get going too fast, you can always pause the video. Now, I'm going to do a whole bunch of bundles of 10. I think I'm going to try and get nine of them in there. There's four, almost. There's four. There's five. Six. It took me a little bit of time to practice getting my bundles about the same size. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, I want to have nine. I'm trying really hard to get those bundles to be about the same size. I need to identify them as bundles of 100, which I'm going to. 
If I get going too fast, my friends, you're going to pause the video to get yourself caught up to where I am at, all right? And then, believe it or not, we're gonna have a bunch of ones too. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put five lines together and then I'm going to put another one, two, three. Five and three is seven. I don't wanna to get too many lines going, so I'm only gonna go five and then I'll come down and add uh, the, the extras that I want. I don't want to get too many or else it will be hard for me to count. This is easy because I can see 5 plus 3 is 7. So how many hundreds do I have? Two hundreds and tens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tens and 5 plus 3 is 7 ones. So that would be two hundreds nine tens and seven ones, which is read 297. Say it with me, 297. All right, so now I'm gonna give a little bit more to you to do without me. We're going on our next box down. This time I want six one hundreds. Remember you need to make those bundles pretty good size because they represent a hundred straws. A bundle of 100. So far I've got four. I want to do a couple more. Okay, so I've got that many that looks like six and I'm going to do some smaller bundles. You're going to have to pay attention here. might have to pause the video so you can get caught up with me. All right, okay, I have drawn the diagram. I want you to turn the video off, fill in and identify what each of those bundles represents. Then I want to know how many hundreds, how many tens, and how many ones. Shut the video off. Shut it off. Are you back? All right, I hope you identified our big bundles as 100s. Did you? Did you identify those big bundles as 100 straws and our smaller bundles as 10? Yep, you do have to do that part. If you don't do that part, I am not gonna be happy. And then I had one, two, three of those, three ones. So that would be six hundreds. Did you get six hundreds? And how many tens were there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tens, and three ones. What number does that represent? Oh my gosh, I kind of ran out of space. I'm gonna have to put it down here. That would be six hundreds, seven tens, and three ones, or six hundred seventy-three. Remember, we're not saying and. 673. If you got that right, you should give yourself a big smiley face. Okay, we're going to do that again, except this time I'm going to say you need to draw three hundreds and I want zero tens. Don't draw any tens. And I want eight ones. Could you draw a picture of what that number would look like? Three hundreds, zero tens, and eight ones. Don't get these two mixed up. This one stands for zero. This one stands for ones. All right, ready and shut the video off. Turn it off. Are you back? Well, I hope that you drew three bundles of 100. Did you? Remember those bundles, whoops, that bundle's not quite as big as I should have maybe had it, but I'll put 100 in it so I know what it is. So three bundles of 100. Was I going to draw any tens? Nope, it said zero tens, but I have one, two, three, four, five. Remember, don't get more than five, six, seven, eight. That way it's easy for me to see that my ones would be five plus three, which is eight. Don't be drawing 50 zillion lines. Keep it at five, if you would, please. And what did that represent? Well, three one hundreds, zero tens and eight ones, or 308. 
Notice how I read that. I didn't say 308. I said 308. I'm skipping right over the tens even when I read it. If you got that right, congratulations. And look at you as a second grader working with all of these really big numbers. All right, so now we're going to turn over to the next page. I think you're going to say, wow, Miss Star, this is pretty easy. I'm hoping that you think so. So let's look at our homework. We've got two ones plus how many ones would give me 10 ones. Two ones plus how many ones would give me 10 ones. Well, if you said that would be eight ones, you're pretty smart because two plus eight is 10. Just like our number bond with 10, two, and eight. It's just a number bond. We've been working with those for a long time. Coming down to the second part of that, that would be the same as two plus eight equals 10. So two ones plus eight ones is 10 ones, and you've been hearing me say that for a long time. Let's move over to problem number two. This time we're gonna be working with tens. Six tens plus how many tens would equal 100? I'm gonna just pause, have you pause the video for just a minute and see if you can figure that one out all by yourself. Pause the video. Okay, are you back? Six tens plus, did you say four tens? Six tens plus four tens would be equal to 100 because 60 plus 40 would equal 100. Six tens is the same as 60 and four tens is the same as 40. If you're starting to make that connection, you should be very proud of yourself. All right, now we're going to rewrite in order from the largest to the smallest number of units. So I've got six tens, I've got three one hundreds, and I have eight ones. Of those units, which one would be the largest, what would come in the middle, and which one would be the smallest? Why don't you shut that video off and let's see if you can figure that out by yourself. Shut it off. Are you back? Well, I hope you started with the largest being three hundreds. Three hundreds. And um, we have six tens. Sorry, we've got the office talking to us right now. I'm sorry that they're interrupting my videotaping. It's not making me really happy, but it is. Sometimes I'm working at school and they interrupt. So three hundreds would be the largest, six tens would be in the middle, and of course the smallest one would be eight ones. What number does that represent? I'm thinking, well, I've got three one hundreds, I've got six tens, and eight ones. So this number is actually represented by 368. Three one hundreds, six tens, and eight ones. There we go, I forgot to put my S on there. All right, now, oh my goodness, look at that. We're back at what we started talking about at the very beginning where we were talking about bundles. Remember my bundle of 100 straws? That's a lot of straws. Woo, that was fun to make and my bundles of 10. That one's not quite so hard to handle. And not a bundle, but a single straw representing ones. So you need to see how many bundles of 100, how many bundles of 10, and how many bundles of one. Shut the video off. Don't do the last one, just do this part. Ready? Shut the video off. Are you back? Well, I hope so. So let's count by 100s. 100, 200, 300, 400. So how much do I have in this bundle? Are these four bundles of 100? I have 400. Yep, let's see how many bundles of 10 I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That represents 60. And how many ones did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They made that hard for us to count, didn't they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. What is the total number of sticks? Well, gee, that's not very hard to figure out. So I would basically be adding 400 plus 60 
plus 8. By the way, 400 plus 60 plus 8 is called expanded form. When we break a number down into its hundreds, its tens, and its ones. So how many hundreds did I have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 one hundreds. How many tens did I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And how many ones did I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 4 hundreds. 6 tens, 8 ones would be the same as, read it with me, 468. 468. So 400 plus 60 plus 80 would give me 468. Wow, I don't know about you, but I think this is fun. I'm really enjoying it. Let's go ahead and, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. We're already at our, um, oh, wait a minute, this is... Where's our, oh, we have one little home, home, and one more little homework thing. Then we're on our exit ticket. Sorry, I kind of goofed that up just a little bit. I got a little bit too excited. We do have a word problem, and I'm going to tell you what, that this word problem is only one step. I know when we were together last time um, on the last module of module, or the last lesson of module three, we had some two-step problems. But this one is only a one-step problem. I'm just going to tell you that right up front. But you still need to use cubes. That's important, my friends. And you need to use read, draw, and write. Those are things that Ms. Starr and all of your teachers expect you to do when you are doing math. So first of all, let's read this, shall we? Moses has 100 sticks. Jared has 60 sticks. Jared wants to have the same number of sticks as Moses. How many more sticks does Jared need? Okay, so I've done the read part. Now I'm going to come over here to cubes and circle the numbers. Moses has 100 sticks. Jared has 60 sticks. Jared wants to have the same number of sticks as Moses. Those are key words. He wants to have the same number. Here's the question. I'm going to underline that question. How many more sticks does Jared need? Uh-oh, there's some key words. How many more? sticks does he need to be able to have the same number? So I have circled the numbers, I have underlined the questions, I have boxed the keywords, I, I boxed same number and how many more, and I don't have any extra information so I don't have to X anything out, but now I'm getting ready to set this up and solve by drawing my model. So the setup and solve, those kind of have, or the setup and draw, those work together for us to be able to figure out how to do this. So I'm, I know, what, here's what I know about Moses. I think you guys all know something about Moses, right? What do we know about Moses? How many sticks does he have? He has 100, right? Yep, he does. All right, and then we have Jared. Jared wants to have the same number of sticks, so I'm going to make both of my model boxes the same size because when I get finished I want them to have oops I probably need to make this one just a tiny bit bigger because he wants to have the same number of sticks as Moses does right now we know how many he has it says he has 60 that's not quite the same as 100 so if I'm trying to figure out how many more I'm gonna have to figure out what that side of the box is how many more does he need? That's what this box is. My goodness, that looks an awful lot like a number bond, doesn't it? <laughs> it does to me too. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to make this a little number bond just to help me out. Not that you have to do this, but I think it's helpful. I know this much. I'll bet you you can figure this out just because this is pretty... Oh, whoa, Miss Star, you're getting carried away here. Don't get carried away. <laughs> I have to figure out what I would have to add to 60 to get to 100. So there's a couple of ways that I could do that. I'm going to start with my equation. There's actually two different equations you could use to solve this problem. I'm going to start with an equation that uses subtraction. So 100 take away 60. What would that give me? 100 take away 60. Well, if you said 40, you're getting really good at your basic facts. I know that he would need to have uh, 40 sticks to be able to end. Whoop, this is sticks. I should have written that in there on 40 sticks. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. 
So 100 take away 60 would give me 40. Now, I could have also solved this problem using addition. I could have said 60 plus what number would give me 100. I could have used my number bond the other way to ask myself what would I have to add to 60 in order to get 100. 60 plus 40 would give me 100. Either way, my friends, your answer for how many more would be 60. So I'm not done yet because I still have to do the right part. Right part. Remember, because this is a word problem, I'm going to have to answer it in words as well. Word problems need to be answered in words. What was my question? How many more does Jared need? So I'm going to say, well, I figured out that Jared needs, this is an important part, needs 40 sticks to have the same number as Moses. So I'm using words to answer my word problem. Three parts, my friends. I have to have a model. When you're supposed to draw something, that's the draw part. Here's my equation for set up and solve, and here's my right part. All right? So read the problem, draw, do an equation, and then write a sentence to answer the question. How did you do on that? Did you do pretty good? I hope that you did. That was a lot easier than the ones we were doing last week. All right, so now we're going to sneak on over to our exit ticket. Remember, those exit tickets are very important for your success, and it helps your teacher to understand exactly what you need to be doing. So here we go with the exit ticket. Make sure you put on your name and the date that you did this, and you need to send it to your teacher. Send to your teacher. Yep, you need to send this to your teacher. That way, she will know that you understand what we were doing. Send to your teacher. All right, and with that, I am going to say goodbye until our lesson tomorrow. Don't forget to send this to your teacher. Bye-bye.